These are the stories. There is a foundation out there that helps to get back into it. Of organizations making a difference. What really limits our ability to do something is people's imagination. And empowering others across Canada. When I get into that sledge, I'm free, man. I'm playing hockey. It's a great organization and it's worth supporting. In our community. never really have flown unless you fly on a, on a four-seater. You get on a jetliner, you're in a tube, you see very little outside, and once the takeoff is done, you don't see anything else. I mean, you, you get so far from the ground that everything looks the same. To fly at a thousand feet from a four-seater and have this just view of large windows that you have all around you, that's flying on a slow 200 kilometer an hour, thousand feet above the ground. That's where you feel flight. In 2017, Dimitri Neonakis started a program called Dream Wings, where he takes kids with illnesses and disabilities for a joyride in his four-seater airplane. I've always tried to give back to the community that supported me, whatever I can give, whatever I can afford, either my time or resources. Dream Wings, it's a part of my giving, and I love flying, and I thought maybe it would be a good idea to share this with children that they don't have that opportunity. I, I wanted to work with children with disabilities. A lot of these children don't have the luxuries that other children have. Most of the times, a lot of the children that I met, they spent in the hospitals. Take them with me for an hour up in the air. I thought it would have been a great gift. And that's how it started. I, I took an ad on Facebook. It was Saturday. And I put the ad on Facebook on Wednesday. And I already had five families. And then it just exploded from there. Dreamwings has become a phenomenon for families with kids with disabilities. If that's Dimitri, then that'll be your plane. Whoa! Was it fun? Yes. It was so awesome. It's gonna be fun. Have you guys flown in an airplane before? No. Dimitri has flown over 300 kids and has about 200 hours in the air. He loves airplanes. Does he? Yep. This is your airplane. This is the one you're flying in today. Can I you can. I'm never given that airplane. It's as simple as sending a message to the Facebook page, and Dimitri will make time to take any child up in his four-seater plane. You're going to see cars, you're going to see cows, you're going to see farms. You want to sit in the front with Dad? Yes. Okay, let's go sit in the front with Dad. Okay. <laughs> I started as a joyride. It turned out to be a lot more than I bargained. I learned a lot about different illnesses by working with his children. So I also benefit. To be able to make a tiny little change in a child's life, it's worth everything for me. The other thing that is important about this little initiative that we have is the parents. These people are the real heroes. They do deserve to take a break, come to the airport, have a flight, see something new, and just get away from the everyday routine. My daughter's name is Moira Kirsten Todd. She will be 12 tomorrow. They work tirelessly for their children. She's been given lots and lots of labels, cognitive delay, speech delay. Some of them spend 24 hours a day with her children. I don't know how they do it. She can never be left alone to have a 12-year-old child who still can't cross the street. Very scary as a parent. She's just gotten back from her very first time away at summer camp and tomorrow's her 12th birthday and this just seems to be perfectly timed so that she learns that she can do things on her own. All right, let's go see our airplane. 
to have somebody take the time to hold her hand and show her things, just her. She can focus, she can pay attention, she can make sense of it, and she's not lost. She often gets lost in the crowd. Here, Moya, let me show you something. The way the airplane flies, the engine drives the propeller. The propeller spins, pushes air back, and produces what's called thrust. What's that white thing in the plane? This is how we get our air inside. The engine drives the propeller. It's this pointy part. Pretty pointy, isn't it? Yes. That's called the spinner. In aviation, we check everything before we go. You know why? Because if something goes wrong, we can't pull over to the side, can we? Are you with me? Yes. All right, let's get in the airplane. Let me get you in the airplane. For her to have one-on-one -on -one with a real pilot and to, for her to be the star of the day kind of thing and to have somebody take the time, she wouldn't have had this opportunity otherwise. All right, we're ready to start. Are we ready, Mara? Let's go have some fun. Okay, and up we go. What do you think, Mara? You're up pretty cool, eh? I've just started thinking differently about how much more independence she's going to need to have. She's starting junior high in September. She's becoming a big girl. You want to fly the airplane? Give me your hands. On the wheel, let's fly it together. Yes, nice. Cool, you're flying the airplane. Yes. Give me five. You flew the plane, you know that? You flew the airplane and you did it by yourself. When she came off the plane, I just couldn't wait to hug her. I had to hold myself back. And did you fly the plane? She did. Very good. High five. Woo! It was a great experience for her. And I just wanted to celebrate that achievement and tell her how proud of her I was. I'm so thankful and appreciative that he's willing to do that for anybody. Like it's that's wonderful. That's a wonderful gift. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Dimitri Neonakis grew up in a small farming village in Greece. It was in this modest community Dimitri set his sights on higher goals. One of my vivid memories was in uh, southern Greece, the crop dusters used to come to uh, spray the olive trees would take place early in the morning because the air was still and they will fly low. We'll run through the olive groves waiting for the next one to come in and the next one and the next one and it will greet those, those airplanes just watch them flying by and, and spraying this, this chemical which it was such a great time, even the chemicals smelled good for us. And I, and I think that was the reason I, I developed uh, love for aviation. You know, that was my initial excitement and then the built up of dreams of, you know, flying an airplane. Just watching those guys up there at low altitude, uh, spraying the olive trees uh, was something I will never forget. And since then, I always wanted to be a pilot. Dimitri moved to Canada in 1984 as a 22-year-old. Fifteen years later, he got his private pilot's license. In Canada, Dimitri successfully built independent businesses in real estate and restaurants, but he still prefers to spend his time in the skies. Dimitri has formed a bond with every child who gets to ride as his co-pilot. One in particular is Tarek Durant, who shares a passion for aviation. Tarek has albinism and is legally blind. Tarek knows he will never be a pilot, but he's plotting his own course into aviation. My name is Tarek Durant and I am 13 years old. I live in a very rural community 
called Pumpkin. I like living here. There's a lot of trees. There's a river that flows just behind my house. At night, when I'm in bed, I can hear the train going by, and you know, it's kind of relaxing. And I usually keep the windows open so I can hear the frogs chirping in the summertime. I'm in grade eight. I'm kind of excited for high school. I'm kind of not excited for high school at the same time. Well, I was kind of having a tough time in school. I wasn't really getting picked on, but I didn't really have that many friends and I was kind of struggling socially. As soon as the bell rang, everybody would run outside and I, due to my vision, I couldn't really find them because I couldn't see where they went. And I used to just walk around by myself. I like math. I'm good with numbers and order of operations and things like that. It's fun, it's easy. The unit we're doing right now, geometry, it's cool because we get to build things in 3D. I was actually writing my name in 3D blocks on isometric dot paper. You can draw things in 3D when you connect the dots to show that I understood what depth perception different perspective meant. Teacher said, that's a cool drawing. Uh, have you ever thought about being an architect? At first, I didn't really know what that was. And then I kind of, you know, looked it up, what the meaning of it was. And uh, it actually kind of caught my eye. And, you know, interest me. When I come home from school, I usually go downstairs, right to the basement, and right to my drawing space. It has paper on it, it has a jar of pencils, that's kind of where I, you know, get all the writing tools. Pile of paper, pile of used paper, pile of unused paper. The table itself actually means a lot to me because it was actually from my first house before I moved. Sometimes I'll just write on it on purpose to make little messages. Some of them are jokes and some of them are like quotes and stuff. One of them just says, Saturdays are for the boys. I'm good at drawing. Used to be not so good. I could just draw stick men, the sun, and maybe a couple trees that look like triangles with a line underneath. I kept kind of adding things to it, depth perception, perspectives, and all that. I did a little better, made some improvements, and eventually it turned out really good. Now I can draw buildings and cars and streets, and, and that's kind of where aviation came to play. I started drawing floor plans. When I started getting into aviation, and I said, maybe I should build a floor plan for an airport. So I did. Tarek is, is headed for something to do with aviation. He's actually a good artist too. And he'll send me, uh, you know, the odd uh, portrait or a painting he did of an airplane or, or a tower or something. First got into aviation when I was maybe 10 years old and I started, you know, getting into different types of planes and reading books. Most of the stuff I read about aviation is online. He pays more attention to knowing and learning. I could spend five hours with Tarek, not flying, being on the ground and doing ground school, showing him different airplanes. I like the commercial, like jets, and then I like military planes. The big ones, like the cargo planes and like the spy planes, like the UAVs and stuff. Something tells me that this, this kid is going straight to aviation. <laughs> and there's a lot of elements to aviation and a lot of jobs that support this incredible field. And I'm sure he's very determined. Our community will return after the break.
We now return to our community. Dimitri flies out of airports in Halifax, Sydney, and DeBert, Nova Scotia. DeBert Flight Center was the first and has a very interesting history. Here's Tarek with some facts about DeBert Flight Center. DeBert Airport was established in 1941 as a Royal Air Force Station, and it was used during World War II as an operational training unit. Sometime during the Cold War, the DeBert Diefen Bunker was built near the airport as part of the military installation, named after John Diefenbaker to protect government officials in the event of a nuclear attack from Russia. In 1972, Canadian Forces Station DeBert was shut down and the Truro Flying Club was formed. DeBert Airport is now used for private flights and for pilot lessons. Tell your friends. I remember um, getting Daniel. The children with the wheelchair were the toughest ones to get in. And I know a lot of them were in pain, especially the ones with muscular dystrophy or Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, like Daniel. I, I've done this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of with times. With Daniel, it's, it's just the aspect that he can't control anything because he of can't. Of course. Move. It's just to get yeah. in. So it's oh. just to get in. And once no. you're in. It's just like, it, like dad getting me in the car. It's okay, just dad? like dad getting you in right. the car. Can dad do it by it's himself? No, yeah. yeah. Okay. Dad and mom are used to weightlifting, oh. believe me. You're absolutely fine. Just close your eyes. We'll get you situated. Their muscles, they have already started to deteriorate. And that's what happened to Daniel. His muscles started to deteriorate from age five and when he was diagnosed and so on and so forth. And he went on all these years, the muscle continued to deteriorate and, and the heart is a muscle as well. Eventually, the disease will attack the heart and the kid is gone. It's a hard reality. Daniel was the first kid we lost from our program. And Daniel's passing hit me hard. I even jumped on the airplane on his funeral. I did a flyby by the church. This is for you, Daniel. There's your buddy, buddy. I jeopardized my license. I had that airplane 100 feet above the church. I rambled the church. I want to say goodbye, you know. Um, Uh, I put his name on the wing and uh, kind of named him our ambassador to our program. Doing these flights has always been enjoyable, but the more I do, the happier I get. The more I know that I make some children happy, um, it's very important to me. No, these are children. Uh, yes, they have illnesses. They have disabilities, they have whatever, but I don't think of it that way. Now is what matters. And how can we have some fun? You know, get up in the air, have some fun. I don't think what the future will bring to these children. It's now that it's important, and what can we do now to provide these children with some joy, maybe some learning. They look at me totally different after we finish the flight. We almost become like friends. They come out of the airplane and they feel pride. They feel that they achieved something that is unique, that perhaps they were afraid to do. Tarek will never pass up the opportunity for a flight. And on this day, Dimitri is going to allow Tarek a little more control in the cockpit. So good to see you again, man. Yeah, you too. Right. It's good to see you again, bud. Yeah. Are you ready for another flight? Oh, yeah. Uh, how many times have we flown together? Uh, I think this would be my fifth or sixth. Fifth or sixth, yeah. Anyway, today we're flying a Cessna. 
Nothing has changed. The old, good, reliable Cessna, high wing. Oh, oh, watch your head, watch your head, watch your head. Are you okay? No, I'm fine. Actually, no, you're fine. Okay, just watch your head. Slowly. High wing, but not high enough. Not high wing, but not high enough, yes. This is a very reliable airplane, very sturdy, easy to fly. Yeah. And uh, you ready? Yeah. All right, duck down. Okay, buddy. The great thing that, that I admire about Tarek and these kids with disabilities, they don't allow their disability to stand on their way. We're ready for another flight, are we? 10 4. It, it's like their disability doesn't exist. All right, you ready to fly your butt? That's wonderful to see the determination that they have. To remember the procedures. To do things, to learn new things. It's actually quite amazing. Nice and smooth, hold the bank right there. That's a very nice bank. And then we're gonna go down towards the Bay of Fundy there. Although he's visually impaired and his, and his vision is limited, he wanted to absorb everything. Push the nose down a little bit, right there. Okay, level off. Very nice, nice flying, Captain, nice flying. It's almost like he's, he's, he's in his element. Look at his altitude, he's holding us at 1,000 feet, steady. This is incredible, he's flying the airplane for the last 10 minutes. I haven't touched anything. But a smooth pilot, man. Yeah, thanks. He's a very smart kid, very smart. He's a brilliant kid. He can do whatever he decides, whatever he wants, or whatever his heart drives him to. Well, Captain, nice flying with you, man. Excellent flying. This is the best I've seen you do. I thought it was pretty fun. I read a lot of biographies of some people who they shined in the field. Something happened in their childhood that made them follow that road. For Einstein, for example, was a compass that his father gave him. So I don't know, maybe, maybe I sparked something in him. One thing I can tell you, we had a great time doing it. And whatever comes out of it, I'm sure it will be nothing but good. After Dream Wings kind of created a spark, and the spark hit a wire, and the wire sent a signal, and it's, the signal uh, told me that it was more than just a flight. It was like a symbol. It meant something more than just you got to go flying that day. It gave me a sense of meaning that I meant something, that I was worth something. You as an individual, you mean more than just a simple organism with two legs, feet, and heartbeat. When I'm older and I look back on, you know, everything that I did before, I don't care what occupation I have, whether it's an architect or an artist or an air traffic controller or a pilot or a carpenter or an engineer, it doesn't matter. I'm going to look back and I'm always going to think about everything that Dimitri did. I'm always going to look at it because it inspired me to be something more. This episode of Our Community, dedicated to the memory of Daniel Arsenault. Produced by Brad Rivers, Mike Zakchevsky. Director, Brad Rivers. Cinematographers, Mike Zakchevsky, Brad Rivers. Editors, Mike Zakchevsky, Brad Rivers. Sound recordists, Sheldon Hatchie, Burton Howell. Production assistants, Kristen Fortune, Carly West. Integrated Describe Video Specialist Ron Rickford. Regional Content Specialist Ryan Delahanty. Coordinating Producer Jennifer Johnson. Director Production Karen I. Director Programming Brian Perdue. VP Programming and Production John Melville. President and CEO David Arrington. Copyright 2019 Accessible Media Inc.